welcome to Indianapolis, Indiana, as we get set for the first meeting of the season between the Indiana Pacers and the L.A. Clippers. All right, as this game gets underway, Jeff, anybody that stands out in your mind that they need to focus on against the Clippers tonight? Mike, I've heard all about Rob. Got to get the people. <laughs> get the people what they want. All right, yo, yo, what is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. DDG94, here with another one, another one, another one, another one, another NBA Live My Career Gameplay. And today we're taking on the Toilet Toto Loop. And then we go, we're taking on the LA Clippers. We're going to try to see if we come out here with win. And man. Blake Griffin, you ain't got to go home, but you got to get the fuck out of that L.A. Clipper uniform, bruh. It's time to go. It's time to break this band up. It's time to start a new system with this Clipper squad. And me personally, I feel like Blake Griffin. D. Blake Griffin should leave the Clippers. I know it's hard to believe. I know it's hard to see him in another uniform other than probably OKC, but I don't even see him in an OKC uniform. I see him in something a little better. And I have a better scenario for Blake Griffin and his free agency this offseason that could help him and his superstar potential that is being held back by Doc Rivers. I don't care what nobody says, bro. Doc Rivers is holding Blake Griffin back from his superstar potential, bro. Blake Griffin is not holding Blake Griffin back. Doc is holding Blake Griffin back because Doc is trying to make him play into the system as some type of stretch big, which that is not what fucking Blake is. Blake is not a stretch big. Yeah, he can shoot out there, but he's not a consistent shooter. He's not a knockdown shooter. Okay? Blake is streaky at best with his jump shot. Okay? He's not a knockdown shooter. Outside of 15 feet. He's not a knockdown shooter, bro. 15 feet and inside, going close, inside. He's knocked down. But, like, if you go outside of 15 feet, he's not a knockdown shooter. Blake Griffin is streaky. That's why I don't like it when he's outside. That's why I don't like it when he's not in the paint posting up. Because that's where he does the most damage at for, for teams. No team can compete with him down low. This man used to be feared in the paint, man. Teams did not want to be in the paint when this man was, was in there, man. You don't want to be in the paint with Blake Griffin going into the paint. Standing in that paint with Blake Griffin was like standing in front of a semi truck. You know, you know, you was gonna get, you know, you was gonna get rocked. You know, you was gonna get rocked. But now, Blake expanded out his range a little bit, and Doc Rivers is trying to turn him into this Porzingis, Dirk Nowinski. LaMarcus Aldridge uh, Kevin Love type of big and that's not what he is man Blake Griffin is a down low beast I understand you're trying to space the floor I understand that I understand he's trying to space the floor He's trying to make sure that, you know, the offense is spread it out so that way his shooters can have room. So that way the shooters can have room to shoot and shit like that. But, dog, uh, Blake is a down low presence, bruh. You will score more points with Blake in the post than you would with him spreading out the floor. I'm just saying. I understand DeAndre Jordan can't shoot outside of, can't do nothing outside of dunk the basketball. I understand he does not have a post game. But at the same time, that's Doc's fault, bro. DeAndre Jordan, no, it just seems like when Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan were starting to evolve into something, Doc came along and just changed that and 
and just ripped up the whole system that was planned for that team to move forward. Because I see Blake's potential. Blake does have superstar potential in him. I still see it in him from time to time. It's just that between injuries and just fuckery that goes on within that organization, it just leads to bad things for Blake. You know what I'm saying? I personally feel like Blake superstar potential is being hurt by Doc Rivers. I'm not saying that Doc Rivers is a bad coach. I'm just saying that the system that he's looking for, it has to be with players that still aren't fucking developing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I understand Blake is 28 years old now. He shouldn't be developing no more. But the thing is, his superstar potential is still there. Like, he could still... He, he still has the ability to be a 28 and 10 guy. He still has that window. That window is still open. It's just that Doc wants him to be this knockdown shooter. That that's that's not what he is. And I'm going to set Blake Griffin up in a great situation. He has two scenarios. I know everybody's talking about OKC playing with Russell Westbrook. I would love to see him in OKC with Russell Westbrook. Don't get me wrong. I want Westbrook to have as much help as possible since KD is gone. But realistically, I want Blake to be on a team where his potential can show. He can truly show the superstar that he truly is. There was a reason why he was the number one pick in the draft over Curry and Harden. I do want to point that out. He was drafted number one overall over Curry and Harden in that draft. There's a reason why. He has superstar potential. It's just being held back by that organization that's cursed and a coach that wants him to be part of a system that he's not fit for. The system, the coach that I think could do the most for Blake in his career right now, there's two teams. There's two teams that can do with coaches that can do a lot for Blake's career right now than Doc Rivers can. Like I said, I'm not saying that Doc Rivers is a bad coach. I'm just saying there is a team. There are two teams, and I'm going to state them right now. And team number one is the Miami Heat. The Miami Heat with Eric Spolstra is probably the best situation for Blake Griffin right now. Why? Because Eric Spolstra turned Deion Waiters into a fucking most improved player of the year candidate. Okay? Deion Waiters' career has resurfaced with the help of Eric Spolstra. If Eric Spolstra can do that, imagine what he could do for a guy like Blake Griffin. We saw what he did with Hassan Whiteside. We just seen what he did with fucking Deion Waiters. Imagine what he can do with Blake Griffin and all that potential that is locked away by Doc Rivers and his fucking stupid ass system. That doesn't work for Blake Griffin's play of style. Could you imagine? What Eric Spoelstra would be doing with Blake Griffin. Blake Griffin. will be looking like a six foot ten LeBron James when Eric Spolstra gets his hands on him. I'm not saying that he's gonna be have the IQ and all this other shit like LeBron. I'm talking about from like a I'm not talking about he gonna have everything like that LeBron has, but he does have the potential. He does have that he does have the dribbling mechanics and passing ability to to be like um LeBron now shooting wise nah i'll probably say down low in the post though he could definitely do some damage like lebron can do 
But when it comes to like uh, shooting and shit like that, nah, he can't compete with LeBron. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that he he he's uh he's LeBron James 2.0, but he does have the physique. He has the the physique and uh and the skill to be another LeBron in the making. Six foot ten. 250 pounds. He's a low post presence. He can get to the basket at will. He has the dribbling ability. He has the passing ability like a LeBron James. With Eric Spoelstra as the coach, coaching him, I'm pretty sure he could tap into his potential and turn Blake Griffin into something great. That's what I'm trying to say with the whole LeBron James thing. So don't take that shit out of context. Let's it go. Off the bar. Hey, you're not a one man team. You've got to spread the ball around so that you can get better. The alley oop he throws it down. That's all I'm trying to say. Don't take it out of context. But the other thing too that I wanted to point out, the other, other team, other team, the second team would probably be the San Antonio Spurs. Why the San Antonio Spurs? They got LaMarcus Aldridge. Why would they need? Here, here's the thing. I think Pop. I think Pop is the is the real. I I think Eric Spoelstra can really bring out the potential of Blake Griffin. But I feel like Pop is like the coach that Blake Griffin needs, to be honest with you. I feel like Blake is a, a team player with a low post presence. And I feel like he fits into that system more than LaMarcus Aldridge does. I do not think LaMarcus Aldridge fits into that system. Mainly because LaMarcus Aldridge does not perform, does not live up to the expectations, does not perform well. As he should. Like, LaMarcus Aldridge is an all-star. He's got a, you know what I'm saying? He's, he, he's been, he's, he's on the level of a superstar point power forward. But, I just feel like he's not a team player type of power forward. I feel like LaMarcus Aldridge is more of a, a stats type of guy. Like, with Blake Griffin, I see a team player. I see a guy that can pass, dribble. He can make the right plays at the right time. He can take over games when you need him to take over. You know what I'm saying? He, like, like he wants to win, but I just feel like being in that Clippers uniform, it just makes you depressing. It just, it just makes you depressed because I, I guess it's just the franchise. I think the franchise is just, I, th I guess it's the franchise so fucking bad. You know, racist owner. Racist owner, you blew a 3 1 lead. It, it takes its toll on you after a while, and you start to start losing your love for the game. But I feel like if he had a coach like Greg Popovich and he started winning and he started seeing the success that comes with being part of that Spurs organization and being under Greg Popovich and actually playing in a system where he doesn't have to really, you know take over games but he but you know he can he can he can be a team player and he really doesn't have to take over games and his potential could still be like dog I think Blake would be happy in that situation no bullshit I think Blake would be more happier in a situation with the Spurs than he would with the Clippers I think the Clippers are just like depressing to him because of how good that team is and how how it's gone nowhere. So yeah, that's where I think Blake Griffin should go. I think he should go to either Miami or San Antonio. And I would just trade, I'll do a sign and trade for LaMarcus Aldridge. I'll give away LaMarcus Aldridge, because I feel like LaMarcus Aldridge would fit into the Clippers system better than Blake would. Because it seems like Doc's looking for a stretch four, 
and LaMarcus Aldridge is your best case scenario. And then you could pair him up with uh, DeAndre Jordan, and then you could space out the floor. You could make things right for your shooters and your bench and all this other shit. It works good. It wonders with Doc Rivers in the system that he's trying to pull off. And as for the Spurs, I feel like they would just have a better, they would have a superstar team player. A guy who's not really going to try to take over games, but he, but he does step up when you need him to. So yeah, I don't know. Y'all tell me in the comment section below. Do y'all think that those are the right teams for Blake Griffin to go to this off season, or is there another place he can go? I understand OKC is a place to go, but like I said, there's nobody there for him in OKC. He's gonna want the max contract. You're probably gonna have to give up half your bench for him, and you're gonna have to pick up a bunch of scrub ass players who can't shoot or defend or can do barely anything and be a seven seed or six seed again and get bounced on the first round again with Russell Westbrook averaging a triple double. So I just, it's a good, I, I, it's a good go home story for Blake, but I feel like he would do off in a, a Spurs or a Miami Heat uniform. But I don't know, y'all tell me though. Y'all get active in the comment section below, tell me what y'all think, and I'll get back to y'all. Till then, peace out.